this was actually came out of the pocket of my yeah, my so hunting I, pack. What I like to do is you take the part that you're going to attach to the bow and you put it between your middle finger and your ring finger. And then take the piece out and I wrap it up around my thumb and then go down between my ring finger and my pinky finger. And then I come back around and make a figure eight on it. Mm-hmm. And you just continue to do that figure eight knots and all. All right, what is up, everybody? I have Eric to my right again, and today we got a fun one. We are getting all tangled up with the Tethered Boys. We've got Ernie and Taylor across from us right now. We've got a a multitude of tethered accessories, platforms, sticks, saddles. We even got a new saddle coming your way that these guys are going to talk about. That sounds like it has some uh, really exciting uh, new features and some tweaks to it. So Eric's got, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, Eric is, he's not showing you, he's looking at it himself. But uh, topic of conversation today, saddle hunting, but specifically DIY saddle hacks. Saddle hunting has gotten incredibly popular in yep. the last couple of years. Eric, you got into it and definitely integrated it into your hunting strategy, your hunting system. You're sitting in a saddle quite a bit. Uh, I got a saddle uh, this last year and tried it out for the first time and and kind of did a did a mix of different styles of hunting. So I got got a feel for it. Yep. And uh, yeah, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably be swinging from trees uh, in no time, right? We're going to so, level up that aerial hunting game so, right now. And I guess, you know, personally, my, my personal saddle journey, you know, so I'd go out and then I'd take it out and I'd be like, hmm, okay, yep. what about this? And I'd watch more YouTube videos. I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll switch this out. Then I'd go out and hunt again and I'd switch another thing. So I kind of went back and forth. And what we're going to try and do today is kind of streamline that yep. for some folks. Get them up and running. Show them kind of what you're getting with your saddle system. But then all these little these little things that you can do to customize it to your hunting style. Uh, talking with uh, Ernie and Taylor here, uh, you know, they do some things to their system. But you're also doing some different things. And I guess that's part of the beauty of the system. Yeah. I mean, so what's so cool and and beautiful about saddle hunting is it's not one size fits all. Anybody can, can dial in a sit a set, uh, for how they want to use it. And if somebody wants to climb with one stick or no sticks or spurs, bolts, you know, whatever you're doing, if you are primarily a private landowner and you have a bunch of spots already prepared, you know, you might have your saddle set up one way. If you're a public land guy, you might have it another way. And if you have, maybe you hunt both, you can have your setup however you want it. So that's really kind of the beauty of it. And so, like, even somebody like Ernie and I will have totally different setups. Um, but we have some things that are similar. And, and they're, you know, things that we like to do for certain reasons. And that's what we kind of want to walk people through. Yeah. And just say, like, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. Maybe you want to try it that way. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe not. But it, it's a good starting point to kind of cut down that learning curve, like like you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. I think for me personally, also like my learning curve was maybe a little bit steeper in some ways. Like Eric, you've been doing hanging hunts with platform mm-hmm. stands and, and for forever. Yep. I mean, hanging double sets, all sorts of things from back from your, uh, you know, your your uh, your video days and things like that. I've predominantly used uh, a climber. Mm-hmm. Like I've just yep. where I've hunted a lot and had fortunate to have pretty straight trees and uh you know that was kind of like a lightweight at least for me lightweight compact way that i could zip up and down and, and it was versatile so i never really have even used steps before so even it, that part was new for me right and that works very well here in in wisconsin where a lot of our trees are straight but you get to a place like southern iowa northern missouri or you know some of these places where you're dealing with more gnarly oaks or yeah. whatever um, then that's where something like that, while it works really good here, might not be the best. Yep. yep. And that's why I think we're going to get into some stuff today that is going to make anyone listening or, or on the fence about saddle hunting feel super streamlined with their, their kit. And the biggest thing for me has been, you know, when I want to go deer hunting now, I grab my backpack that already has all this stuff in it, grab my bow and I'm off to the woods. Yeah. And, and, and like we were kind of talking before we hit record, um, but to be able to hunt from the tree yes. and not a tree yep. is the big difference. And that's kind of how I got into saddle hunting. And was the first time you ever sat in the saddle when I was here yeah. like three years ago yep. when we were outside on the cricket tree? So like the yep. trees outside here are a perfect example 
of some gnarly trees. Oh yeah, that if yeah. you had your climber or maybe even like a lock on, it'd be you difficult get into it. to hunt almost from. a no go. Yeah, um, and and if that was where you needed to be. Like you're able to climb and hunt from that right away, no problem. Right. So it, it, you know, that for me was how I got into saddle hunting forever ago. Yep. Was I just got tired of of knowing where I needed to be, not being able to hunt in that location, and then being 40, 50, 60 yards away from from that spot, and then yeah. watching the deer walk through where you knew they were going to exactly. come. Exactly. It's like I got to get closer. And yep. You know, I'm a big feller. It's hard for me to hide on the <laughs> ground. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, and for me, I got into it because I like to tinker. And exactly like you said, everybody's system is different. And and back when I started doing some of this stuff, there wasn't a system. The, sure. You know, there really wasn't a commercially uh, available product. A couple of people had some stuff that was out there. But for the most part, the community and the people that this came out of, they just m- came up with cool ideas. They posted, hey, what do you think about this? And, and it spawned off and... I loved it. You know, every couple of days there'd be something like, "Ooh, I gotta go buy those parts," or "I got, I gotta do this because I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do what that guy did. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make that, and whatever else." And so ultimately, that leads into, like he said, very customized sets of yep. your equipment. And even now, years later, and now with tethered and some of the stuff that we make at tethered is simply because it's the stuff that we used. Sure. But even still, I got a handful of stuff that, yeah, that's made out of parachute cord and and pieces of plastic and whatever else. Um, just because I still tinker and customize yeah. some of this stuff. Yep. Well, and, that, and that's one of the cool things about like the saddle community is it was born out of a DIY community and, and mindset. And so there's still a lot of that kind of like backbone of DIY stuff in the saddle world. It was originally because we couldn't find any of the stuff we wanted. But mm-hmm. now I, I still think that yeah. spirit kind of lives on. And, you know, again, like there might be a commercially available product that you can add to your, your kit. Um, but Maybe there isn't, and maybe you know you you make your own little platform holder or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. I mean, getting back into and we talked about this before. I think even on the podcast, but just one of the advantages or or things that I do like mm-hmm. about I like a lot of things about it. But like Eric, you're talking about just grabbing your pack, right? Yeah. You've got all your stuff in your pack, and that's such a, a streamlined, comfortable way to carry your equipment. And I know you like to run and gun, hit a bunch of public land, uh, and uh, and similarly for me. And sometimes, sometimes I know where I'm going to end up, but sometimes I don't. And so yeah. when you're exploring and you're kind of in that like almost like in season scouting, yep. trying to find that spot where you're going to go, being able to slip through the woods quietly, you're not hanging up on stuff, and then you finally find that spot and you can zip up and, and get after it. It makes Absolutely. a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, everything's in your backpack. I keep a Tupperware bin. Yeah. It's got a change of clothes, my backpack, my stuff, and it all just fits in the truck, and it's just there, right? right. And so, whereas, you know, depending on your system and what you're doing before, you're not going to fit a tree stand in a Tupperware bin. It's just not going to, you know, and so it's clean, it's organized, it's in the truck, ready to go. And you can do a, you know, get off of work, come home, hop out and go, and it, the, the preparation and the cleanup to get into the woods seems easier because it's it all does. organized and ready yeah. to go. Oh, yep. yeah. Every, everything's simpler because if you're, you know, let's say you're that guy that we're talking about that hunts 50% of the time on grandpa's farm and 50% of the time on public land, right? Yep. And so if you're that guy, before you go out to hunt, you're like, okay, tonight I'm going to go hunt the back corner field ladder stand. Okay, great. Now I don't need to bring anything other than my harness or whatever. And then you get to the tree and you're like, damn, I forgot this or that. Right. And then, or if you're going deep in, in public and you need to make sure you have all these pieces of your kit that you don't normally have. And then you get there and you realize you forgot something like no matter what, if in that scenario, if you were a saddle guy, like you have your saddle, you have your platform probably. And then the trees either prepped or you have your sticks and you just like, it's way simpler of a system. And mm-hmm. it's much harder to mess up, and that repetition helps you be faster, quieter, and and just you know easier to a- hunt. Absolutely, and I've even found that like hunting that style keeps you engaged in the hunt longer than if you have a end destination in mind. Even if whether you're on public, private, whatever, you know. I, I think about you know the, the 2017 was the last year that I hunted in a, a regular you know, traditional tree stand. And for, for me, a lot of the places where I was going, I needed to have like a, like a very specific tree in order to get that system hung, 
So I knew that I had to get to X on the map. And I would just like put my head down and I'd get there. With this system, I don't like I might end up in that tree. I also might cut hot sign in between A and B and and, and be there. Um, so it keeps me more engaged and, and the the hunt is just a more active overall hunt. You're more engaged. I find you mess up a little bit less. You're on your, your game more. Um, and I think there's a lot to be said about just keeping your mind active when you're, you know, going to and from the tree. Yeah, you're, you're actually hunting. Yeah, like when exactly. When you leave the truck, you're actively hunting. And so if you're going in and, and you're, like, ready to climb, you have your full setup, um, you know, Greg, who wanted to be here today, unfortunately, yep. he's got COVID. Oh no! Oh, he's stuck at home, and <laughs> yeah, he even—he's in a pain cave this he, week. Oh. It's bad. He even cleared it today. I think tomorrow was his—he and his wife's anniversary. Oh, oh man. And he's still no. got a hall pass to come. Well, and today is my anniversary. Yeah, you know, I'm, I had to call oh, home geez. this morning. Love is <laughs> in the air, guys. It's, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so Greg killed a buck in North Dakota last year—a really good buck. Uh, that exact mm-hmm. way, you know, they had X yep. marked on the map. They were going to go way back. They're walking in. They saw a ton of hot, fresh sign. Yep. They climbed a tree, and then you know, yeah. carbon, carbon was in the air yep. moments later. I so like it. That, I mean, and cool. that's part of hunting, right? Like it you is. need to be able to read the sign. And I think you hit the nail on the head yep. that too often you're like, okay, well, I know there's a tree that I marked back there. Exactly. And I need to get there. Yep. And it's not that you maybe couldn't do that with other systems. Right. It just seems like just the level of flexibility and, and ease with which you can. It almost makes you want like. I've been like, man, I want to go over there, but I don't, you know, with my climber, and it's a great climber. I love yeah. it. So I don't want to like down talk it, but like, oh, yeah. you know, it's got its limitations too. And it's like, if it's super thick and brushy and it's hanging up on stuff, mm-hmm. like I don't want to walk over, yep. you know what I mean? Like yeah. it just makes yep. it, and I know you have done this, Eric, I haven't, but as far as like getting uh, a deer out when you're successful, if you, yeah. if you're back in and you quarter a deer up, yeah. like it's just it's easier to get that deer out in one or two trips and bring your kit with you yeah, back out on that. Exactly. First trip. Yep. hundred so. percent. Well, and, and like you said, you've got, it's, it's almost like you've got a level of commitment on, if you know that there's a tree back there you're that gonna, you've already got it set up for your climber, you're going to be really hesitant to stop and prep a whole new tree. Cause you know, you're going to have to cut branches. You're going to make a noise or whatever else. And so you're mentally just not thinking that that's the, that what you're going to do because everybody gets lazy, right? You don't want to go through all the work when you've got a tree that's already set up that was your original mm-hmm. thought to go to. So it's a lot bigger draw just the, the work and commitment to get to that tree than it is maybe the sign. And it can pull you off of where you should have been. Anyways. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Mark, you've got this kit here. And yes. We are streamlining your kit today. We're going to yes. go over different hacks. There's also going to be a really cool series on YouTube for those yep. following along that want to see a visual of this from A to B. Yep. We're going to talk about a lot of things here. Yep. But like you said, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yep. So listen to this, and then we'll be able to kind of see some of those things in action from start to finish. Absolutely. Yeah, we're literally going to take a saddle out of the box yep. and then build it into what Ernie or I would hunt yep. from. Exactly. And then we're going to leave it with you guys to get oh bloody and gosh. messy. Yes. Yes. You well, excited? I'm very excited. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get this party started. So, Ernie, so. what what would you say would be your... So, so right here we have Mark's saddle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Mark has two of our, our cis haulers. He's got one fat bottom and one OG. Uh, the difference there are the pockets. So those are all personal preference, right, on, on what you want to carry around. Personally, I like having pockets because, you know, extra room for Snickers bars or mm-hmm. oh, other yeah. accessories, tons of flair. So this is DIY saddle hacks. We'll get to DIY saddle snacks yeah, yeah. in, there in yeah. future episodes. In a future episode. <laughs> and, and, and for what it's worth, fat bottom is more of like an internal joke. It's yeah, this is the, the 2.0. It's the 2.0. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you go and Google the tethered fat bottom, don't Google. I don't fat know bottom. what you're going to get. You <laughs> might, you might get some not safe for <laughs> yeah. work content yeah. there. Um, <laughs> 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 I was just trying to. Yeah. No, honey, it's not what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, I love how you put your your uh, cis haulers on there. I like to have them like right up on my yep. hip. Um, you know, my the like it's almost like as forward as possible, as possible. Yeah. As yeah. As yeah. As as more, more yep. accessible, and that opens up the back for 
this little piece right here, which we call a clippy. And you just put you, this on. I didn't I, have this before. Correct. This will change your, your, your whole life has now changed. Okay. So you're welcome. I like um, that. <laughs> so this, you know, you can clip whatever you want in. We're pretty good at naming things. So mm-hmm. clippy, pretty descriptive. Um, <laughs> you can clip whatever you want in here. Yeah. But what we like Anything to do- Anything you want to keep cold. Yes, exactly. It's a perfect little beverage for a little rebel. Yeah. So huh? we like to put a, um, a night eyes gear tie- through the platform and so you can run it however you want but basically we've put that on there and then when i get to the tree i'm going to take this platform out of my pack or however i'm carrying it in there Mm -hmm. i'm just going to pull it up and i'm just going to pull this down and i don't even twist it some guys will twist it but you know the more that you twist up the more you have to undo exactly about 22 feet later right so and i'll say previously that's one thing that i was struggling with because i'd get my platform out of my pack and then i'd uh Un, you know, undo the straps here or whatever and kind of like sling it over my shoulder. Sure. But it was kind of like moving around and, cl- you know, as I'm climbing, climbing up, it was just kind of, I don't know, it just wasn't great. Yeah. yeah. So the, the whole idea is let's eliminate noise. Let's eliminate bulk. Yep. Let's make it streamlined. So it's, it's easy to repeat. It's safer and just like easier stuff's yeah. out of the way. Yeah. So what I like to do is I'll have that on my, my tailbone and then I'll put my sticks on either side, right under my cis haulers. Um, you can very easily take some paracord and just loop paracord, like a loop through here, or you can have paracord on your stick itself. It's totally personal preference, uh, and we'll probably dive into that more yeah. in the video series. But basically, I like to have the ability to put a stick on either side, this on my tailbone, so there's no clanking, banging. Yep. That's, mm-hmm. There's no go-go music yeah. playing when I'm at the base of So the you're street. probably putting just one stick on the ground mm-hmm. or... Are you doing one or two sticks when you're just on the ground? I put one stick on the ground. Um, so I have I use four of these one sticks with aiders. Mm-hmm. So I have a movable aider uh, that I personally use. Um, so I'll put one at about head height. Then I'll put one on either side. Mm-hmm. However, when these one sticks came out, these things are so light yeah. that I just started putting them all. So I'll have three. I'll just put them all on one side. And yeah. actually, I think Ernie had a little... Yeah, uh, way that he likes to do that. Well, but. and I'll explain what I do because I actually don't do this in the same order as you do. But yeah, yeah, you can because of the way they stack together and everything, you can hang them all on one side, and then as you're climbing, peel them off. Sure. But if yeah. you wanted to hang one on each side, just like you had said, you set your first one up from the ground, undo the rope and everything on the second one, and hang the rope on the top step. Then you climb up, reach down, grab the rope. Set that one, climb right. up on that, then you can peel the one off the right, climb up, peel the one off the left, and you've got four sticks now um, to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, that's how a lot of guys will do that. I personally like to just keep them in a stack on one side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. so if I'm following right, you guys, what you're describing right now, this method of carrying stuff in, you don't even need a backpack to put your platform or even your sticks in for that matter because they're all on the harness itself in the way that you guys are or yeah, well, just, I don't walk in like that yeah. yeah that's what I do so what I'll what I'll do is when I get to the base of the tree that's how you I have now it set up put that stuff sure. on yeah, in that position that because there's too much stuff hanging around right. yeah, that's clanking. you start to look like a panhandler yeah. stuff swinging around and banging as you're walking whatever else I keep it clean till you get to the Ernie. bottom of the tree yep put it on gotcha. and organize okay. it okay I'm following now <laughs> got it yeah so that I mean that's how I climb the tree um, then I get get up to height hang my platform and then yeah uh, you know, okay. shoot something and it dies in a pool so. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that happens right so I do mine a little bit different where you put your platform in the middle of your back I actually hang my platform off of one side and okay. I've got a parachute cord loop with some tubing in it that I can yep. hook around. Is that this right here? That's this. Okay. So this is actually girth hitched onto my saddle, and it just hangs off this side, and it's quiet. Doesn't make any noise. Yep. Um, and for me, I Explain do have- Explain a girth hitch real quick. Yeah, that is ask. good. That's so a, good a girth call. hitch, I mean, real real simple is if you've got a loop of cord, um, you go around something, and then pull it tight, and it just yep. holds on. Yep. Um, and we can go over that here you know, in the YouTube or whatever. But it's Yeah, so like basically if you're going to do it right here on Yeah, and analogy. I would go around yep. um, and then slip this through 
and then pull it tight. But obviously, you know, we're not dealing yep. with the same diameters. Exactly. But that's all it is to it. Yep. It's almost like a loop to loop connection. Exactly. Yep. yep. And we use it a lot for attaching ropes to the saddle and things like that. But this lives on my saddle is always there. And then for me, that's on my right hand side. And the way I do it is I can just hoop this over and my platform hangs off of there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then I climb up. And so my platform is hanging on my right side. My sticks are on the left. And then what I have in the middle of the back of my saddle is my retrieval rope. I use a Doyle's uh, retractable hoist. Yep. And it's sitting in the back of my saddle, and it's always there. Year-round, it's just it's sitting there. And so I can put that on my bow. I got my sticks and my platform, and I hike up. And obviously, you know, as you go, it pays out, and then it comes back in. Um, and that's kind of how I do my, my three positions to yeah. go because – uh, a, it's kind of a lot of work to get this on and off the saddle, yeah. and so I put it on. It just stays. It's on the back. It's out of my way when I'm hunting, um, and I can go with right. there. Yeah, um, and I guess, I mean, it's not going to, you know, it's got kind of a plastic shell there, but from that location, like, it is directly behind right. you. It's not going to hit it's anything. It's not going to hit anything. Th- you know, there are guys that will take and put this in a pouch, and then they'll put a little hole in the bottom of the pouch and have this hanging oh, out the I bottom. See. So yeah. that puts a cushion, you know, stealth strip, whatever. I haven't had it be an issue because it's in a place where I never touch anything, right? It's in the Mm -hmm. back. Um, Our buddy Garrett did that. He, like, designed a full pouch for it. Sure. Yeah, okay. Now, you've Um, got, speaking of hacks. I was just going to say this. You've got some markings on that tape there. Yeah, so this is is kind of my own little deal that I I do. Um, What I did is I just, every foot on my uh, retrieval rope, I put a white line with a number, and it goes all the way. And for me, that's something that as I'm climbing, I can always look and see how high I am yeah. and and just get a feel for, okay, I know this is a 30 foot hoist. And if I start getting, you know, sometimes it gets to be where like, I get really ambitious, especially when I'm using my spurs. And next thing you know, I'm way too high for a good shot angle and whatever else. So this lets me get an idea of how high I am and whatever else. Okay. Sure. Um, And work on some of that. And it's, it's a cheap and easy hack to do, but it basically creates a tape measure out of your hoist. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and also, you know, if you, you're you in the woods, maybe it's a piece of public or something, and somebody's in your spot, you could be like, hey, you're about two feet away from an ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> sure. One thing I would suggest. I don't mean that, by the way. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You earned that. Uh, one thing I would suggest, I use the ribbon-based one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So one thing I carry with me in my uh, gear, and um, we can show this tomorrow, is uh, a little collapsible grapple hook. Mm-hmm. And so I can throw a grapple hook on here so that oh, uh, right. I can lower it down to pick something up. Or at the end of a hunt, I can use that grapple hook to lower my backpack down. Yeah. And then once it's down, you just give it a little jerk. It lets go of the backpack, and I pull it back up. But if you're lowering anything that's very heavy... The really fine rope version of this can sure. dig into your hands. And so if you're lowering heavy stuff, you're less likely to cut your hands with okay. the right. ribbon than you do the cord. Yeah, and and what I've noticed there doing that, what you just described with a rope, is you'll you'll literally actually like burn out the uh, textured grip on your gloves. Yeah, yeah. same thing. You know? Right? Yep. Yeah, if you don't have gloves, and then it's burning your hand. Right? Yeah. It's the same process. Exactly. But, so I've just found that using the, the ribbon style mm-hmm. is a little easier on my hands. Gotcha. Interesting. Cool. Um, Very cool. So yeah, we'll. Uh, I've got that grapple hook. I'll show you. It's one of my one of my favorite Ernie mods is this uh, coiled piece of shot cord here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hard, like ridiculously hard on equipment, um, and I. Uh, anytime I'm walking through the woods, whether I'm uh, elk hunting, whatever else, everything is attached to me in one form or another. <laughs> just because I drop stuff, I lose stuff, or whatever else. Um, and so this piece here is quite literally for my cell phone. Yeah. Um, oh, it, yeah. I put this on my saddle. It's got a little clip, and I modified the case on my phone to have a little loop. And so <laughs> quite literally, this just has a little S beaner clips on, yep. and there's my phone. And so as I'm in, I, if I drop my phone, it's only going so far away right. from me. Right, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. I th- I really we had a conversation with the uh, Heartland Bowhunter guys yesterday. Okay. And they had dropped a couple cameras <laughs> out of trees over the, over the years, and something like this. And I've I've seen guys do it as well, you know. 
drop a camera out of a tree. Sure. Not oh, a cool yeah. thing. That would save the day. I always, yeah, I mean, you probably still want to be careful, but whenever I'm like, whatever, maybe you're texting from the tree, maybe you're not paying attention to the deer, and then a big buck walks by, and you're like, ah, why was I texting? But uh, that would never happen, Eric. Yeah, yeah. yeah never. Uh, <laughs> but I'm always like, so, like, it's like, you're like, don't draw. Yeah, <laughs> you know what you're, I mean? you're ultimately yeah. paranoid, right? Right. Um, and so one of the things I do is once I'm at hunting height, uh, because of the way I pack my system, the sis holler on my right hand side is empty. Sure. Um, because those products that were in it are now in play in the yeah. tree. And so it's all set up so that if I do get caught in that situation, I can just reach over and drop my phone in the pouch. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I miss, it's yeah. caught. Right. So if I miss yeah. the sis holler, cause I, I try and get it in there, but ultimately I'm also trying to pay attention to this deer or do whatever. And, sure. um, it's just for me. I, I break stuff. I lose stuff, and I drop stuff. And this just is a. It's a real cheap, easy way to make sure that my phone doesn't yeah, hit the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I li- I like that a lot. That's super cool. Huh? Can you? So we we talked a little bit about um, bringing steps up, and and you kind of alluded to it, Taylor. But Ernie, how with with having all of your steps, and then we just have two right here. But you know, you might have three or four. Or you might just have two, but you're keeping them all on one side and you had kind of a clip system to do that. They, they kind of, I guess they explain how these are going together and how you're getting them off that clip system. Okay. Well, the one sticks are designed to snap together. They've got a set of pins um, and they're set up so that you can put them onto each other and stack and they hold pretty good. Um, now, one of the things that uh, is nice, like we said, they're light. You can have them in a stack. What I was doing uh, in the past was I would have a night eyes tie on the top stick. Mm-hmm. And I would, same like Taylor talked about, night eyes tie it to a clippies on my saddle, and yep. that's how I would hold it. Um, but this year I, I bought something, and I bought it commercially from a guy who was making it. Um, and it's just a little clip with a metal piece that would go on my saddle. And then the one sticks actually are sized such that it just snaps on. And so ultimately I can hang my whole set of sticks off the side of my saddle like that. And then as I'm climbing, I just take off the next step that I need until I get to the bottom one, and then I put it on. Yeah, um, for sure. You can adjust this clip, slide it up and down. So it could be sitting at the top while you're climbing, slide it down, and then it can just live there on the tree until you're ready to go. Um, again, this is something that I bought. Uh, there was a person that made that. But ideally, you could make something like this yeah. in your garage pretty easy. Yep. One yeah. thing that I thought was pretty cool, <clears throat> when I first started hunting uh, out of a saddle, I bought the Lone Wolf, the yep. three-step, like the generic standard. I hunted with that for a long time. Each one of those, I think, was advertised at 2.5 pounds. And I filled mine with foam and had them all taped up with like hockey tape and everything. And they were right around three pounds per stick. And now, if I put all three one sticks on my hip, they, I have three sticks that weigh what my one original stick. Right. Yep. It's amazing what what yeah. the weight, ha- how that's. Sure. Uh, and if you're using an aider, you don't need that many sticks. I mean, I'm a short guy. The, the running joke is I got the inseam of a beagle. <laughs> and uh, Puppy beagle. For me to get yeah, a puppy beagle, no less. Uh, for me to get up a tree using just sticks, it takes yeah. a lot of sticks because I just I, I can't step that high and whatever else. Um, so I bring an aider, uh, but I know people who will carry, you know, six of these sticks yeah. and not use an aider simply because six of them don't weigh anything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what we're looking at here, so I'll kind of hold these up right now and we'll probably look at them a little bit more, but, um, not, not everything here is how they come out of the box. Like they might look a little different coming out of the box. So what, what are the mods that you've made here to kind of, it looks like, you know, maybe, uh, dampen some noise or things like that what do you got going on here and i think actually those are not so these are are not how they come out of the box these right. are stealth stripped so this is kind of like a, a silencing uh material that goes on and these are just the two different camo patterns that they come in it's like a like a thin felt like a thin yeah camo it's, like felt. Moleskin. it's yeah. almost moleskin, moleskin. oh right. yeah if you get a blister you it's could, very similar yeah. to like a moleskin um 
And, you know, we've partnered with the guys over at Stealth Outdoors. They make a kit for us that's cool. pre-cut, pre-measured. I was going to ask goes that. Goes right on the nice. sticks. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we've got that. We've got it in a couple of different patterns. But uh, it definitely makes a big difference. And, you know, we stealth strip everything. We, we've got a guy on our pro staff that stealth stripped his entire mountain bike. The whole thing. Um, you know, it's just what it, we go through a lot of it. But that's <laughs> one of the first things that uh, with any of these metal products I do is I like to put yeah. some stealth strip on there. Okay. Um, now you were looking if these were filled with foam. I right. personally took my own um, one sticks and I filled them with a uh, like an adhesive foam that you can buy that expands um, at Home Depot or Menards, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it did not add any weight, and it really helped with with just deadening if you like accidentally hit yep. this. I mean, you can hear right now; it's not loud. Like, no, these that's are right. Totally fine to hunt with, but. Um, you know, I just was trying to see sure. what it would do, and, and I like it. I mean, I would I would do it again if I, you know, had a new set. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah my set at home has it. Um, I will caution that not all expandable foams are the same. Um, right. Certain brands are a lot denser and a lot heavier than others. Um, the one that we've found that kind of seems to be the lightest but still get the job done is a Loctite brand. Okay. Uh, it seems to be a lot airier, a lot less dense, still fills the void, still knocks down some of that vibration. Um, but if you were to buy, like, great stuff, yeah, that's a super dense foam. And, I mean, you're, you'll yeah. put a lot of weight in your sticks. Right, you're defeating the sure. purpose why you spent yeah. the money to yeah. get so the light the Loctite, I think it's like a expanding crack sealer is what it's called. It's a red can with a little nozzle on it, and that's what we've been running in these, and yep. they work really well. Cool. And I think you did a video on that as well, yeah. kind of showing yep. that process. Yep, yeah. Um, and one thing is to make sure that you leave them outside after you fill them yeah. because they do not stop expanding, yeah. and it looks... Like, it's a it, yeah, it's a little obscene, but yes. So put a pe- put a big piece <laughs> of cardboard down, fill them up, Kids, and close your eyes, and then walk <laughs> away because you're going to come back and three times as much foam as you think is in the stick is on the ground next to each. Yeah, it's oozing yeah. out. So definitely leave them outside overnight. Maybe maybe something underneath it that yeah, like you said, don't a piece of cardboard, cardboard or something yeah, care yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. Yep. got um, it. Because it definitely they they will expand, they will ooze out or whatever, and and it. It makes I, a big mess. I was Once blown it's dry, away. it's easy. You cut it with a little knife, yep. and you're yeah. good. But even it even expanded into the roll pin. On oh. Here. Like, it was amazing how deeply it penetrated uh, the the cracks. I mean, it did its job, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. crack filler, yeah. so, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> that is super cool, though, because, I mean, anything that is that is going to be um, I mean, everyone knows what that like hollower sound is, mm-hmm. and you dampen it up with something as lightweight as a ultralight foam, and you're gonna kill a lot of that sound. And these, like like you said, I mean, as they are, just stealth stripped, like nine out of ten people are gonna be good with that, you right. know. So right. I mean, if you're taking it, like you can certainly level up a bit and and go with the foam, but even just with the stealth strips, like they are super yeah, ultra quiet. Really quiet. I'd probably be inclined just to do that and then at least hunt with it and be like oh, do sure I, do yep. i think i really need to <laughs> well, that's you know. when you like drop it and it makes a loud ding and yep. then you're like damn it <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> why didn't i fill it with foam right i also noticed that you have a bird's nest or a rat's nest of uh rope here would you like to see an easier way to store that yeah this is incredible this, this is my bow rope now this t- this is actually years in the making uh it's several different pieces of paracord from like i think different bow ropes that i sacrificed over time and then ended up tying together some like memories from middle school in I, there. I mean, I was, this i don't yeah. even know what this this might have been from like a call lanyard i don't know but i got this clip from uh from something so that's on there so i just run that through and then you know uh Mark, tie it to itself there in about this like, is homemade you probably didn't know that in 400 years somebody's going to discover this and they're going to start like digging into like it'll be a fossilized artifact and they're going to wonder like what was going on in this person's <laughs> mind? Is this some kind of like this art project? Yeah, yeah. Is this is this how he entertained was himself? This? He just tied ropes together. It, it, it was a kindergarten episode? art project. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it looks great. So yeah. let's uh, let's dive they're in. Like, so I, they're like, I mean, there still were primitive people living alongside <laughs> modern man. Uh, so yeah, let me. So this is this was actually came out of the pocket of my yeah, my so hunting pack. I, what I like to do is anything 
you know, Ernie likes to run that that gear hoist. I like to run just paracord. Um, I have one continuous piece of paracord without the knots, but no, weird. Um, this is camo. See, yeah. it's got camo. Yeah, it's cool. strips. So what I like to do is you take the part that you're going to attach to the bow yeah. and you put it between your middle finger and your ring finger. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and these two. Yep. Yeah, it's the ones in the middle, and then take the piece out and I wrap it up around my thumb and then go down between my ring finger and my pinky finger. And then I come back around and make a figure eight on it. Mm-hmm. And you just continue to do that figure eight knots and all. Um, this will be like the true test to yeah. see if this right through there and you just do that. So I'm going a little faster. And then the, the main key to this is when you stop it, you want to stop with about, I like to have about, I don't know, what is that? Eight inches, inches, 10 inches. So. Yeah. So maybe here. And then, so you pull it off, you keep this piece free, and you hold the whole thing like that. And you just wrap this around mm-hmm. here. And then at the very end, you just keep a piece of it and pull it through. Just pull that tag in through, kind pull of like a little bit through. of a. So now this is good to go. Right? And this is nice. It's purdy. Yeah. When you get to your tree, you're going to clip this part on your bow. Mm-hmm. You're going to... I like to have another clip here to clip onto my saddle, so it just hangs like this. Right. And then as you climb, this beautiful thing is just going to continue well, to pull didn't out. Have the knots in the- it. Theoretically, yeah. if you had... Well, and you can even have it come out with the knots, depending on how tight you pull right. your, That's pretty handy. your loop. Yeah. And it just comes out, and then you have no knots. And that way you're not stuck messing with it, uh, you know, with a bow dangling three feet off the air. And yep. You're 15 and you're going like. Yeah, but who doesn't like like to get to their stand maybe a little bit late, you know, and that, that gray sun's light is coming just up. the it's sun's like coming up. It's like the perfect time. You hear bucks grunting, yep. maybe a little chasing going on in the and woods. And then you're like, but now I've got a puzzle to figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A rope puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Your stabilizer is <laughs> caught in your rope. It's like. Yeah. Tipping all over the place. You yeah. may or may not have been up late playing cards in camp. Yeah. Right before. Um, I like that. That's handy. I mean, and that, that that's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be using that. Well, I just tied it for I, you. So by the time that you go to use this during the season, yeah, you will have probably already forgot how to do I was, this. <laughs> and you can reflect back on this exact very moment. And you can actually say hi to your future self yeah, right yeah. now. Yep. <laughs> Mark, remember that you have this. Uh, I am going to report back on like September 20th with the status of this rope. Yes. That's a and total Bill and Ted moment. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're talking to, to your remember future to self. Remember to wind your watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, made, I made a video. You know, we have MC Ryan here who is just, you know, the podcast mastermind. But occasionally he sets me out. Uh, on my own and you know end up somewhere and and podcasting so i had him make uh or we made a video together where i the video starts out mark you're talking to yourself in the future (laughs) and we go through you know what we got it to work though i made the podcast equipment work it was amazing i know it was great surprised myself we'll see how the bow rope does (laughs) um all right eric what else what else or gentlemen what else we got going on here yeah i mean um just generally speaking, you know, I like to have my lineman's belt in my left pouch. I like to girth hitch it around uh, the lineman's loop, so that way I only have one carabiner. Uh, and then I will keep my tree tether over on the other side. Yeah, and and how do we currently have this set up? We what have do we, got? Do we, have we do not here? have it set up like that. We have a little bit of a hodgepodgeness, which I'm just blown away with. I'm not sure what's going on over there, but. I, uh, Mark, this, this is an audit. Well, <laughs> this is an I, audit. We're here because we love you. Yeah, I didn't fall. And not yet. Um, so, so here, I'll tell you what I was doing. So I was I would get my lineman lineman's belt out, and then get that going, and then that left my tether, like kind of free to grab. Okay. I guess so. Let's go ahead and take that off because I want to fix that. I want to show you a trick too. Is that what you? I think you were talking about that earlier. I was. Do you need a knife? No, don't need a knife. Uh, I got a trick that it. Uh, that, that, <laughs> that was my question. I'm like, I don't know if I really. I only cut through expose. half the rope by accident. Yeah, just go ahead and take that whole rope man off. Hand me the saddle there. So this, 
obviously on our linemen, the loop on the end is pretty small, right? Yep. And then with our safety warnings and the heat shrink that's on there, it's kind of hard to fold into it. Right. right? Yep. So, like I had it girth hitched, but it's kind of preventing it from yep. kind of yep. locking down on itself a so little bit. So here's what there. you do. Take the loop, your lineman's loop, uh -huh. push it through, like so. Then you take the tail of your lineman's and push it through the line, through the actual lineman loop on your saddle, and pull this all the way through. And then you can kind of pull that up. Oh, then it's only hmm. attached, to and it'll just square the rope. knot right on there, and you're locked in. Ernie, can you can you kind of hold that up to like sure. the yeah. camera so they can kind of see what happened there? Okay. So it gets rid of that weird circle that you had hanging on there or yeah. where it wasn't cinching down tight. And the only way you can do that is, like I said, by by feeding it through this way and locking it down. And okay. that gives you that. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That is super cool. You're going to get more line there, too, because you won't Show have as put much. The on also. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so what, what I took off here, I took your prusik knot off. Because this is what it ships with. You can add the ropeman, which you very intelligently did. Right. Yep. Um, and so I personally found, even though maybe I didn't have it set up like you guys would have, like it was usable with the with that. But like the ro like the ropeman, almost like amazing. not for yeah. me. Like yeah. I was yeah. like, I need like that was one trip to the tree, and I was like on the internet buying one of those things. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yep. Well, and ultimately what it ends up happening is a prusik, when you load it, when you put weight into it, the knot cinches up, yeah. which is fine. That's what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And as you're climbing up the tree, the tree is ultimately going to get skinnier. Sure. And as it gets skinnier, in order to tighten your prusik up, it's a two-handed operation. You have to reach down with one hand and grab the rope and reach down and grab the prusik with the other to slide it. Okay. And what the ropeman allows you to do is just reach down and grab the rope and pull. Yep. And so now you're adjusting the lineman to the size of the tree Got it. with one hand while you're still able to hold on to a climbing stick, still hold it, whatever. Yep. You're, it's a one-handed operation. Yep. And that's ultimately where this shines is being able to adjust it one-handed. Yeah. They're, they're not complicated to install. They've got a pivot hinge in it that will open up. Yeah. Uh, so you just open it up, slide the rope in there, close it, and then you're going to uh, feed your carabiner through the hole. Yep. The spring-loaded teeth bear against the rope, the rope bears against the carabiner, and that's where you get your friction. Yeah. The thing is, is once you've installed this at ground level, make sure it's on the right way. So mm -hmm. try and pull it. If it pulls and it's not the way you want it to, flip it over. So Got it. otherwise, you know, you'll you'll get up a little bit, you really haven't put any weight on it, and all of a sudden you put weight on it and if you don't have it installed the correct way, <laughs> it's well, it's a really <laughs> exciting trip to the end of the rope where the knot is. So it's better to have that correct. Free underwear. <laughs> so the rope man is essentially that that's a, a a gear piece that is like born in the rock climbing world. Correct. We actually borrow a lot of components from the rock climbing world. Yeah. Um, you know, some of our buckles, some of the carabiners. You know, it all comes out of that. I mean, I I cut my teeth as a tree trimmer for yeah. a lot of years, and so some of this stuff came from what I did for a living. Okay. Um, you know, and it was one of those deals where the the tree trimming equipment is made to well, it's made to trim trees, and, and it's not quiet. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Mean, you're running a chainsaw, so what do you care if a metal carabiner clips on something else? Sure. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And so we went through great lengths to try and get rid of as middle, many of those metal projects cool. as possible. But some of the stuff is just, it's so handy, like yeah. the Ropeman, that we just, you know, continue to use it. And oh, yeah. We also carry... Uh, uh, like a an ascender descender in the mad rock uh, safeguard for okay. the guys that are doing uh, some of the one sticking or guys that like to repel at the end of the hunt instead yeah. of climb down. I'm one of those. Uh, if I can get away with it, I use my climbing spurs, and so I'll use my spurs on the way up and I'll repel down. Cool. Um, and so that's you know again, all of us do it differently. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you guys familiar with one sticking versus? I've multiple seen stick climbing. So I've I've watched yeah. videos about it, but I think we should go over it a little bit for people that might be listening and are unfamiliar. So one of the one of the cool things about hunting from a saddle is you can actually make it work kind of like a climber, where instead of using your lineman's belt as you climb, you can take a single stick with an aider. 
you can set it at a height. You can put your tree tether around the tree to where you could sit down and be fine. You can walk up the step, move your your rope up like you would with a climber. You can sit down. Now you don't need that step anymore. You can then pick the step up. Oh, wild. Repeat the process, and yeah. then you can go as high as you want. Yeah, so think of your climbing stick as the bottom of a climbing tree stand yeah. and your saddle as the top. Yep, and right. And you just, you know, you inchworm your way up the tree For using sure. those two components. Cool. Hmm. Um, and what, uh, then when you're done, you get to be a ninja for about 45 seconds and you can repel really? out of the yeah. tree. Yeah, because most guys bring like a 30 or 40 foot tether with them as they're doing this. And once they get up to full height, the tether that they were using, they leave it. Yeah. And then at the end of the hunt, they repel down and then pull the tether out of the tree. Hmm. Cool. Well, this sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. A lot of people really like it. For me, um, I'm I'm no uh, Cameron Haynes. I, I I sweat too much, work too much trying to do yeah. that. So I I'd rather take my spurs. Or sure. A set of sure. Spurs. Yeah. What um maybe kind of do, do you have your spurs here? Or maybe no. Just I describe I what those are like then, or how a person might use those. So again, I cut my teeth as a tree trimmer. And yeah. So they're basically a set of. Uh, angled boot attachments they go on your feet and they've got a spike that comes out the side and pretty much like a ninja or like anybody's seen a utility lineman guy climb a telephone pole and he just kind of stabs his feet in on the way up it's the same process okay um and because i was a tree trimmer i'm more comfortable on those spurs than i am a set of sticks i'm on i'm more comfortable on those spurs than a ladder i ladders scare the the bejesus out of me so but um which is funny because those spurs are very scary to use yeah uh, yeah you don't want to put one of those it's into backwards your, i've done yeah. it right really oh yeah like the, stabbed your other leg or? yeah years and years this is when i was actually working in the utility line industry uh i slipped and buried one of those spurs to the base in Ugh. my leg it, it was nasty um but uh but I still would rather use my spurs. Than yeah, yeah. Else. Um, but I just, you know, for me, I'm super comfortable with them, and where I can get away with it, private land or you know places where there's not restrictions against it, mm-hmm. that's what I'll use. Um, and then I went out and I'm like, well, if I'm going to have a set of spurs dedicated for hunting, let's yeah. get the best and lightest and whatever else that we can. And so I bought some obscenely expensive carbon fiber. Oh spurs. wow! So my spurs. All in are two and a half pounds for the set. Wow. Um, and then do you, are you still using a platform when yeah. you get to the top? Yeah, I take them off when I get to the top, that hang them on a branch. That's question. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I stand on a platform. And, and mainly because they're just not that comfortable to spend a lot of time standing on. Yeah. They're functional to get up. They're yep. functional to walk around. But if you're going to spend hours in them, they're just not comfortable. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then... I take them off even because, like, if I'm in the platform, they do have a metal spike on them that can cling and bang on yeah. things and whatever yeah. else. And yep. so, makes sense. Yeah, yep. when you when you transition from the tree to your platform, you have to really make sure you like thread the the metal you know point into yeah. a void yeah, in the or platform. Stay on your toes yeah. or something yeah. because yeah. you can easily make some. Yeah, there. yeah, that makes sense. So, and I have a weird phobia too, and this is just me. Um, I always have this fear that I'm going to slip and fall and gut myself on whatever my climbing method is, whether it's screwing steps, climbing sticks, a branch that's hanging out four inches out of the tree. Um, and so when I'm using my spurs, none of those objects are underneath me if I slip. <laughs> and yeah. so I, I don't know. I get some kind of comfort out of that. Because yeah, you're just gaffing yourself. with. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it happens, but yeah. So I've, I've eliminated the risk of all the pointy things by adding two uh, pointy things. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we just went over the lineman's belt. Now there's one more rope in here, Mark, that you had in the same pouch as your lineman's belt. Yeah, and that's your tree tether. Yes. yes. Um, and so, I mean, that there's really not much to mess with on yeah. that one. I mean, I like to have it uh, not in there. I like to have it in a, in a separate pouch, but again, that's just personal preference. Well, and I might, because, and we'll get there, I was keeping my um, step ropes in this other pouch, but you were kind of showing me a different way that I can kind of store those on the step. But let's let's stick with the tether for yeah. right now. Yeah, so, I mean, the tether, this is our 11-millimeter tether. Mm-hmm. We also have an 8-millimeter, both lineman and tether. 
Uh, and we'll go over those. We'll do maybe a video on them. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll point those out, just the size difference. Um, I prefer the eight millimeters just from a bulk perspective. Sure, sure. Right? Not And, and granted, like this isn't a ton of bulk. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're saddle hunting, you might as well go all in. So uh, the eight millimeters would actually fit very nicely together in this pouch. And it looks like you have some uh, of the woods that you've brought with oh, you as well. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. A little, little bit of a twiggy tree that you climbed. That's, uh, that's how you know I actually went outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Looks like the bush from your front yard. But yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, so yeah, I mean, you can put them both in there. Just make sure that the lineman's belt is on top cool. of the tether because obviously you're going to need the lineman's belt prior to. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I tend to pack mine a little bit different and I pack mine in a certain order based on how I'm going to use it. Yeah. Um, anybody who's seen my setup and how I do it, I tend to keep my lineman's belt on my left hip. Yep. Uh, I also keep a little saw on my left hip in mm-hmm. the same pouch. Yep. And then on my right hip, I've got three items, and they're packed in there in a certain order. In the bottom is my uh, recliner, my back band. Mm-hmm. On top of that is my hitch strap. And then on top of that is my tether. And the reason they're in that order is because as I climb up and I get to where I'm at, I, the first thing in there is the tether. I pull it out, hook it up on the tree, climb onto my platform, Make sure everything's set. Reach out, grab my hitch strap, put it on the tree, pull my bow up, yep. hang it. Yep. Pull my backpack, hang it. Reach in there, grab my back band, put it on. I'm hunting. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, everything goes back into the pocket in the reverse order. Yeah. And in, in, in the spirit of like DIY mods, the the hiss strap is something that is. I, I think I actually watched a video from one of you guys about. So obviously that's where you're hanging all your stuff. You know, you've got your bow on there. What's Here we the go. what's what's the HYS stand for again? Hang your stuff. Oh. Hang your stuff. <laughs> stuff. That's right. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. We wouldn't do anything. Oh, here other I got this. That. Maybe I could do the. Uh, which is also why this is the sis hauler, which is store your stuff. Store your stuff. Hang and your stuff. Yeah. We're clever. So what? What? Uh, I think it was one of you guys that actually went over this, but taking uh, like hockey tape and going around these. So, one, you're going to silence it, like Mark has not done. We'll silence My bad. it. <laughs> and then um, that hockey tape, I think I think you guys even mentioned you'll tape this so it's always in the open position. So, actually, we'll just pull them out. Oh, you, you okay. You can just take yeah. that off. Oh, you work smarter, not harder. Well, and <laughs> <Story> again, <of laughs> my life. Yeah. Uh, again, that's a total preference thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm just like <laughs> <don't> break, <laughs> wrenching on my... <laughs> don't break my stuff uh, just yeah. yet, Eric. BYS. I <laughs> break your stuff. <laughs> I don't take that off. Okay. Um, Which is why Ernie keeps everything clipped down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't take that off, specifically because I don't want to have something come off and fall. Right. right. Um, so anything that's attached to that generally has a piece of paracord or tether or something. Got that, it. That I can still maneuver it away from the tree and use it. Yep. Um, but it's uh, it's not. It doesn't have the possibility of coming. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I like to run mine open, so I'll I'll put stuff that yep. I like uh, frequently will take off on yeah. the range finder, for yep. example. Yep. Um, you know, grunt tubes, yep. something maybe yep. like rattling rattling antlers. And like even what I did is I have uh, like a little. Well, I mean, you could do it with an algae, you could do it with anything, um, or uh, like those Yeti coffee cup things mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, you could just hang your coffee there right in front of you, too. And what better Boy, than to join your coffee that is at amenity. eye level in the tree? There is nothing better yep. than coffee on like a cold December morning yep. during a hunt. Yep. Uh, Nothing better. I have never taken coffee to the stand. It's a me. game changer. Yeah, I, Dude, I, I, I honestly do think that it, it keeps you on, on stand longer. That's Absolutely. a whole other topic, but I really do think it keeps you on the woods longer. I just, or I, it, on I just, saddle longer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I just utilize general toughness on that one. Aaron. I, don't, I don't have that. I need coffee. So I, this is, so this is hang my bow right? off yep. that yep. one, and then like I'll strap my backpack or something, yep. whatever, to... Yep. To yeah, that. so I like to run that right at about, like, head level. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my bow goes right in front of me on the tree yep. as a right-hander. I like to put my pack back around, yep. like, the 1 o'clock position. Yeah. Uh, and then all my knickknacks. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah. And I actually... Uh, I'm in the, well, uh, up until a couple of weeks ago, I did everything backwards of that. But, uh, so I would hang, same thing, bow on one side, backpack on the other, and I hang my backpack on the tail. Because the way the hitch strap is oh, made, sure, yep. you bring it around the tree, yep. loop it through the loop, 
And then when I put my backpack on there, it adds weight and sucks that down tight. Yep. Okay, so right. that way my bowl can't loosen things up and whatever. But I always hang I my backpack. I think that's what I was doing as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. And so I hang my backpack a little lower. Um, so my backpack is almost at hip height. Yeah. And, and that helps get into it. And, helps yeah. you get into it and whatever else. But then I take my binocular harness and I attach it to the tail above my backpack and have it open. Oh, um, okay. So my binoculars are right there in front of me in a pocket. And yeah. Because I don't like having them on my chest, and I don't, you know, so I just reach up, and there, there's a pocket right there in front of me. Cool. So. Hmm. A lot of ways to skin the cat. Oh, yeah. There are. There are. What, um, like I said, so I was, uh, I've got my, uh, I had a couple, I had uh, like a more of like a, like a buckle system, but then I went and I got these, these guys uh, in lieu of a buckle to attach my steps. Yep. Sure. And, but I was leaving them, like, I just kind of had them, you know, balled up like my bow rope. Uh, yeah, I've, I've actually never seen somebody do it this way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. Welcome to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've, we've seen lower. We were on a podcast one time with a guy that... Uh, the first time he used our saddle, he had that thing up around under his armpits. And was wearing <laughs> that, oh boy! Like a chest belt, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. That was one of the more unique <laughs> explanations that we we had. Yeah. We had to do some education at that point. Yep. <laughs> so when you're looking at these, there's one eyelet that has what is that like 36 inches, 28 inches or yep. so before you get to the open holes, and so I like to put this around. Not for the one sticks. These have yep. a proprietary system. But if this was another buckle, you know, it'll go like that, yep. and then go around. And then when you're done using this, this little nifty elastic piece, you know, just wrap it around the stick, and then just cinch this down on whatever, and it's going to stay there nice and tight. Yeah, I mean, ultimately that first loop can again be girth hitched onto the button of whatever yep. your stick is, so that it it doesn't have to come off. And you guys even gotcha. brought up a way. Um, that you guys use that or have at least experimented with ways on the, on the platform. Um, or are we not talking about no, that it's, part? No, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, everybody does things a little differently. Yeah. Um, so there are some guys that will use this product on a platform. I mean, it's ideally made for sticks, but it can be used on a platform. Cool. Um, you know, and again, that's saddle hunting. It's everybody does it differently. Yep. And so it's, it's a matter off. of finding how you're going <laughs> to make does it. does now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Would you wreck that for him? I was just pulling you on got it. Scott Parks over here. I was, I was here. tightening. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> tightening is not. It was loose. Scott's worked. We tease Scott, and we'll be we teasing because this is true. He is notorious for taking like your new thing and going, ah, "How does this work?" And <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, yeah. Oh, that's usually your me. stuff back. <laughs> you like, you didn't oh, want great. that windshield, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually me. So I, I know what that feels yeah. like. But, but that is the goes, goes back on very fast. He's uh, very as well, easy. So. Well, yep. and you know what the point of that was. Well, I know what it is. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a rubber weight to throw around the tree. Sure. Yeah, to get the sh- the thing to go around because yep. it's hard on a bigger tree to get a soft material with these ropes yep. around. Well, and those it doesn't weigh anything, so right. without right. that, you'd be just kind of like right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So this is helpful to throw it around the tree. Yep. Yeah, or you can pass it to a buddy. Yeah, play hot. Hop that tanner. was that was intuitive to me. I'm like that. I know what this is for. Yep. And yep. It, Get but, it around, but but that is the cool part. That is there. There are just so many different ways that you can customize this, and and you know, kind of create a system that works for you and your hunting style. And I know you guys are actually going to put a lot of what we just covered here in the podcast into into practice here in the video series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to see some of this stuff in action. I will say so one thing that. So I've attached pockets, or I'm going to call this a pocket, but uh, some of this, but you said I've actually, I could actually tighten this up by, like, I just went through the bottom and, and use this, uh, you know, kind of. Yeah, three tab slider. <clears throat> we like to run those down from the top um, and we'll do a little, little demonstration of how we like to attach cool. those. Okay. Uh, so we're literally going to take everything as it comes from the package yep. and put it on a saddle and then we can go into, you know, what we like to do with the saddle. But. You know, that's part of the fun with the saddle is dialing it in, playing with it. We really tell everybody, you know, when you get your saddle, go to ground level. Yeah. Clip into a tree, mess around with it. And 
and you know start with the tether at a certain location move it up a little see how that changes it move it down a little move your your uh, connection point in and out you know a lot of people will get in they want to recline back that, that might feel comfortable for a little bit yep. but you know some stuff it's hard to replicate time in the saddle so even yep. when you find that spot that you think is very comfortable at ground level when you're in the tree maybe hour three hour four you feel a little like tension in one spot you can just let out you know a little slack whatever and then eventually you're going to find like nirvana in the saddle mm-hmm. and uh and that's where and the yeah. only way you're going to get there is to actually just spend the time yeah you just sure. have to tinker with it yep. and mess yep. with it and figure out what you, what you personally like well, well at least one thing i found and maybe i just didn't find that nirvana spot but uh like you said you're there i mean you're kind of in the same kind of the same position for at least a number of hours. Yeah. So even just making a minor tweak, it could have been perfect, but just, you know, putting a little pressure in a different spot, it's like, it's just nice to be able to make that adjustment. Yeah. Well, and, and think about it, right? I mean, every one of us has sat in a metal tree stand somewhere, right? Yep. And after a certain amount of time, you find yourself leaning on one cheek or leaning on the other cheek or you're standing. I mean, you're you're changing positions there. And, and this is no different you're able to make adjustments with, say, the comfort channel or your bridge length or your tether height or your tether uh, attachment. And, mm-hmm. and you're able to make all these different changes. You might you might sit for a while. You might lean. You might put your knees against a tree, whatever else. Yep. But being able to make those small tweaks and, like you said, transfer pressure from one portion to another over the course of a hunt, it just allows you to sit yeah. longer. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've also found that I've been able to shoot deer that I don't think I would have shot out of a traditional tree stand by letting my tether out like a lot. Yeah. Right. So if a a deer is kind of feeding through an area and you kind of, you're like, okay, you know, he's going to walk through that spot. That's where I need to kill him. But there's no shooting hole there. You know, I can drop down a good bit and then all of a sudden get to that spot. Yeah. Like kind of get under maybe like a piece of canopy that would have blocked your shot. Yeah. 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 I, that, my, buck in missouri last year had to do exactly that i was i had to get way low to get because he he came in right but he came in at a full run and by the time i was able to get him to stop all of a sudden he's in a place i wasn't ready for and and there was there was brush in the way and in order to make the shot i had to lean way back and lower tether way out and you know part gymnastics to get it yeah absolutely yep Awesome. I, was going, I love it. I love it. I was going off my little checklist here. Apparently, we've checked all. We the, have checked, checked all the bullets here. Real quick, though. Yep. What we're going to be demoing here in the video in a little bit is uh, at least at at press time, at audio press time. Yep. From start to finish. What do what do we got going on? What yes. is this kind of new new saddle oh, that you sure. guys have coming um, out? We both flew here. We don't have a knife. Yeah, I know. I don't have a knife in my pocket. It's uh. Somebody got one handy? Yeah, perfect. So this is our Phantom XL. And ultimately, it is what it sounds like. It's a bigger Phantom. So it it has a couple of things. Um, the main idea behind it was to give a little bit more material and a little bit more saddle for some of the bigger guys. Um, that was the original genesis of it. But as we found more and more, even small guys, sometimes they want less of a minimalist saddle and they want a little bit more coverage, a little bit more seat and whatever else. So this is actually set up so that it can accommodate uh, both sizes of people. Um, We've got a a feature in there that we call a freedom belt um, that allows you to kind of adjust it for different size guys and whatever else. But it's a bigger saddle. Uh, It's a couple inches taller. I think about six inches wider. Hmm. It's got a six inch longer bridge. Um, and so it's set up to really accommodate some of the guys that are, that just need a little bit more. Um, when you first open it up, one of the things that you'll notice is that freedom belt. Uh, it's an inch and a half wide, uh, belt instead of the one inch that's on the regular Phantom. And then the way it is set up, the belt actually rides through a channel and is adjustable right to left. So it's fully sewn on on one side instead of having the tri-glides that yep. everybody might be used to. And what that allows you to do is you can then adjust where that buckle falls yep. in the saddle and then cinch that down. And so that allows you to take this saddle and make it pretty small. Oh, wow, yeah. Or you can adjust that buckle back to the center 
And by sliding it through the channel, regardless of your waist size, you can center the buckle in the center of your that's waist. That's really gotcha. nice. Um, and so that's, like I said, that's our freedom belt. Uh, and what it really benefits is, like I said, sometimes uh, you got guys with a smaller waist who yep. want a bigger, more full saddle. They can still use this. Yep. But a bigger guy can as well, and the buckle ends up being centered. One of the other things that we've added to this saddle that is kind of new to us is all of the Phantom XLs have four attachment points coming off of the belt. They're pretty small. They're inconspicuous. But what they go with is our suspender series. So oh, okay. we've got a set of suspenders that we'll be launching this fall as well that clip directly into this. And... That's for a guy who maybe likes to really load up his sis haulers for the walk in yeah. um, and carry a little more weight. Or let's say you're uh, in the saddle and you're hanging there or whatever else. If you got to stand up and uh, make some adjustments, your saddle's not going to fall down on you sure. when you're in your tree. Makes um, sense. Now, these saddles have attachment points in them for the suspenders, but the suspender kits come with attachments for any molly based system so you can add our suspenders to the rest of our saddle line as well um they don't have to have these loops to be able to put that on there um the saddle is like i said it's deeper top to bottom it's longer right to left and the bridge is six inches longer so it's got a lot more adjustability into it and uh i think it's going to be you know, it's going to be one of those things where if anybody ever felt like the Phantom was a little small or maybe they uh, were getting some hip pinch they didn't like, and, you know, different things like that, this is going to be a more full-bodied type of a Perfect. saddle. Perfect. Well, um, I can see a scenario, too, where a guy maybe has both in yeah. the arsenal. And if you're just headed out after work, you know, you just throw this on for a quick hunt. Maybe you don't even bring a platform. Like yeah. you're just going in light bare bones. You're hunting from the top of the yeah. stick. You're sitting all day November 15th, like, you got that guy out, you got the the XL yep. platform, like, you're Absolutely. In, you're the wearing your hole. full, you know, insulated layers. Yeah, was, oh, yeah. sure, bring right? that up, you too, know, for yeah. sure. Um, you know, I, I hunt a lot in the cold, you know, being Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, the, the below zero days are pretty common. Yeah. Um, and I'm able to do that just fine in all of the gear that I have before the regular yeah. Phantom and, and our Menace and et cetera. Um, but I'm excited to see what this is like this year just to see, you know, once I'm bundled up like a snowman, does this, you know, help Absolutely. out on some of that? So. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, I think all of that is the perfect lead in to the video series. Yep. So if you guys want to, if you guys are listening and following along and want to see what all of this stuff that we described looks like in person, be sure to check that out. It'll be on YouTube the day that this podcast goes live. Yep. The launch in tandem. Yep. So tune in for that. And yep. Mark, in the meantime, saddle up. Saddle up, partner. <laughs> <laughs> I, and now I will let you sign it off because that's where I end. <laughs> Come on, Cinderella. we got to get you the ball. Uh, no, man. Thanks, everybody listening. Thanks for you guys. I mean, this is all really, really cool information. Just those those little tweaks, you know, and I think we're always looking for that edge or how we can perfect our yep. system, whatever that is. And we covered a lot, a lot of ground here. Some really, really cool tips that I think people can take to the bank and implement themselves. And uh, yeah, appreciate you running through it. So I'm just impressed it, that you wanted your saddle dialed so badly that we created all this for us to come out here just to get your saddle. <laughs> this whole event was to fix up your saddle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it all comes out. They're on to me. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thanks everybody. If you got any questions, let us know. And yep. uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And and like like I said, thanks again for you guys. And uh, we'll see you in the tree. There you have it, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As usual, give this video a like if you liked it. Comment something below and give us a subscribe to the Vortex Nation podcast channel. It would mean a lot to us. Also, why don't you give us a follow over on Instagram while you're at it, at Vortex Nation Podcast. We'd love to hear from you over there, and we'll keep you updated with all kinds of cool photos and videos from our adventures that we do here. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one. Thank you again. Happy hunting and shooting, everybody. Have a good one.